Hi, I'm Jack Cush, reporting from ACR 2021, the virtual meeting. Yesterday, a great abstract was presented during the plenary session by Dr. John Hanley. John has been working on the area of neuropsychiatric lupus for many years. He's from Dalhousie University in Nova Scotia. This presentation was about functional connectivity, enhanced blood-brain barrier leakage, and cognitive impairment in lupus. Simply stated, this is about cognitive abnormalities in lupus being linked to um, blood-brain barrier abnormalities, and that's actually all very subclinical in patients that we would otherwise characterize as having neuropsychiatric lupus. My studies in the past that, that looked at this showed about 50-55% of patients actually do, character, do have features of neuropsychiatric lupus, uh, except we don't go so far as to diagnose them. Um, it's only when they get these dramatic presentations of psychosis and seizures and uh, other you know, focal and global findings do we get that diagnosis. In this study, they had almost 150 patients that they uh, assessed. They did functional uh, MRIs on them, and they did blood-brain barrier permeability assessments using diffusion contrast enhanced MRI, uh, a much more sensitive tool than the usual Q-albumin, which I'll talk about at the end. Um, they did cognitive testing in uh, their group, and they found that 48% of patients had evidence of cognitive impairment. A lot of questions from the audience were, how many people had lupus cerebritis or actually had neuropsychiatric lupus? And the answer was uh, almost very few. So this is sort of sub, a subclinical finding that you have to go after, but half the patients had evidence of cognitive impairment. When he mapped out the um, um, presence of cognitive impairment and the MR, functional MR uh, findings that go along with that, uh, and then the amount of blood brain barrier permeability that was in, uh, impaired, they showed a fairly good correlation um, between the two, uh, and that was sort of surprising. And I think that this kind of data really calls for basically more research in the area. Again, they had 48% um, um, with an ab a cognitive abnormality. I'm reading some of the conclusions from the study. Um, you know, the bottom line is a lot of these tests we don't really have. You know, we don't do uh, functional MRIs. We don't have these tools for blood-brain barrier leakage and permeability problems. So um, we can do MRs, but they're often fairly nonspecific if we do that. And we don't have many studies that have looked at the utility of PET scanning and SPEC scanning in these patients. And it would be an expensive way of finding out information that we wouldn't really know what to do with. So what can you do? I don't think we, I think we need more research uh, from John and others that are working in this field. Um, if you want to know about, about blood-brain barrier, the simple measure is the Q-albumin. When you do a CSF um, spinal tap on a lupus with suspected cerebritis or infection or metabolic changes that affect the brain, uh, you should get an IgG index. You get a Q-albumin. Q-albumin is normally less than 9 um, about 20% of lupus patients will have a slightly elevated between 9 and 15, but really high Q albumins greater than 15, and I'm talking like 30, 50, 100, are usually due to infection and vascular events, strokes and antiphospholipid mediated events. Q albumin is the CSF albumin times 1,000 divided by the serum albumin. Again, normally less than 9, but you know, uh, and it's okay in cerebritis to be a little bit elevated. And they know the number of patients that they had in their population that had blood-brain barrier permeability abnormalities wasn't high. It was about it was less than 20%. So it could be that Q albumin number of between uh, of nine and 15, about 20% of what I'm what I've seen in the past. That might jive with that result that he has there. But we don't have this. We need to have more research in this area. But it's good to make this correlation because if this is in fact contributing, you know if Autoantibodies, for instance, are leaking across from the serum into the CSF and mediating neuropsychiatric disease. And maybe that's something that we could therapeutically challenge in the future. Hope you enjoyed this abstract. See more on Room Now.